All right, welcome back, everybody. Fantasy Alarm TV, Jeff Manza, Ray Flowers, hanging out with you here on a Friday preview in Week 4 in the NFL and in fantasy football. Also going to possibly sing some Richard Marks tunes today, Ray. Um, hopefully. That's always been one of my uh, my favorites. Uh, you know, if you've got a lady and you want to impress her, you want to set the mood, it's either oh. Barry White or Richard Marks. Yeah, no doubt. I like the Richard Marks. Favorite Richard Marks song if to set the mood, what would it be? <sighs> what would be your go-to? I mean, Mine would be Angel I mean, Angelina. Where Angel you going this time? Wow. You know, Richard Marks, I don't actually have an answer because I don't really know the names of songs. Uh, and I'm not going to sing because I have no confidence in my ability to do that. But uh, Richard Marks has written a lot. Of, like, he's become Barry Manilow. Like, he yeah, writes right. the songs, you know? He writes the songs. Um, he, he writes the songs that makes the whole world sing. Exactly. He writes the songs of love and ABCs to be... Just to clear boy. Anyway, let's get to football. We're boring the hell out of it. We, we really spent a minute talking about Richard Marks. We People did. are not going to like that. Uh, you guys, okay. can you uh, can you not talk so much Richard Marks, please? Okay, we're sick of football. Okay? Yeah, okay. Let's talk about my... Let's talk about God's will for a moment, shall we, Ray? Oh, and sure. Yeah. I want not to get too deep on, you know, on a Friday night here, but God's will. I willed God to prove himself... By taking out Joe McKnight this week. And wouldn't you know it, he did. On a Friday afternoon practice, Joe McKnight tears his Achilles tendon out for the season. It was good timing because Deontay Thomas was back anyway. But this just goes to show bad waiver moves have consequences. That's how I'm viewing it anyway, right? Yeah, they do. I don't know if God's involved or not. but um, the, Oh, he's involved. The, well, as a, as a former theologian, I don't know if you're... You're quite on par there with your argument, Jeff. But I'll let it go. Uh, it's, yeah, the, the, I'm par. The, the, I'm par. The, the waiver wire moves. You're right, and I think in, in in fantasy football, it makes sense to go heavy early if the player's the right player. And what we see a lot of times, people they spend heavy early on the wrong player. Uh, and a guy like McKnight, what was his role going to be anyway? I mean, terrible. Two touch. Nine. Yeah, two touchdown game. That's never happening again. You you say it all the time. You don't chase points. Adding him was chasing points. So it, when you're adding a player, if you're going to spend the big bucks, it's not to get a guy who's sharing the backfield with three other people. Telefero is someone everyone's excited about right now with the Ravens. It's like, I'm not spending heavy to get him. There's still four set. Pierce is there. You have yep. to be smart about how you spend those free agent dollars. Exactly. And I said the Telefero thing was week two. Going into that Thursday night game in week two, that was the time to get him and hold on him because you knew something would go on with Pierce eventually. I thought it would you know, take a couple more weeks before Pierce just proved himself to be incapable. Turns out he gets injured. I knew what Talia Farrow can do. I, I'm positive what he could do in that offense. But right now, he's third on the totem pole for now. Now granted, he will leapfrog because Forsett is stuck at that number two. But this week is not the week, like you're saying, to spend on Talia Farrow. So, you know, when you're doing your waivers, it's all about... People spend 20 30% of their budget on Joe McKnight this week. It's a terrible, unbelievable waste of money. How about some players that aren't worth... That's not necessarily a waste of money in this on this week's waiver wire. What about Brandon Oliver from the San Diego Chargers down at Woodhead's out for the week, Ray? Right? Are you buying into him at all? It's one of these games that, you know, Woodhead sort of comes and goes. When the Chargers are trailing, he gets a ton of activity... Will Oliver step into that role in your mind, or is just Donald Brown just going to hold it all down? Well, Donald Brown had over 30 touches last week, which is shocking. And you know you can't expect a workload that high. What he had, like 62 yards rushing. He was very ineffective running into the line a lot to to run the clock out. But we've seen the the Chargers at least since the start of last season want to deploy multiple backs. Um, you know, and that's Woodhead and Matthews when everything is going well. They've got Brown there now. Matthews is probably what three weeks away. Something like that. Once he gets back, uh, yeah. So I, I'm not a big fan. You know, I, I think you know if you want to make one of these pickups for you know two or three week period of time, if you're going to go small, if you didn't want to overspend for some of the bigger name guys, fine to go with Oliver. But I don't think there's necessarily a lot of run as we go forward. What are your thoughts on uh, Doug Martin? I put I basically laid my junk on the table, Ray, for the whole world to just come admire. And I said Doug Martin is a top twelve running back this week in PPR formats. Uh, I'm confident going against a real beleaguered Pittsburgh Steeler uh, defense that has they lost three starters: Jarvis Jones, Ryan Shazier, and Ike Taylor. I mean, this is already was a, a subpar unit. Now you're really destroying probably the three best players on that defensive side. Tampa Bay with 12 days to prepare. What are your thoughts on Doug Martin coming in this week? 
I think going Doug Martin as a top 12 runner this week is very aggressive. Uh, I'm not saying yeah. that it's not possible. It's, it's aggressive. Like my love, it's like my love making. Very aggressive. Is it? Yeah. Is that why you showed everyone your junk? Why would you yeah. do that? I just because. Because oh, okay. I just, I do, I'm like a gorilla in the wild, man. I just, I'm just like, here's, what, here's what's up. Whatever. Just so you know, I mean, I don't like secrets. I don't like things being, you know, I like to be upfront with things so we know what we're dealing with. Well, at least if I'm, if I'm going to show my junk on a video, it's going to be with a woman. So that at least there, I can make some money off it. I'm not just going to lay it on the table like apparently you did, Jeff. But uh, Yeah, I don't well, see a problem with it. But, you know, to each their own, right? Teach yeah, their we'll own. talk about marketing when we're done with the video here, Jeff. We will. Um, the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, need, you need a little bit of advice. Look Bobby at my Rainey. junk! <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Rainey is, you know, he's coming off a game with a couple of fumbles, and Rainey, I don't think ugh. that he pre pre presents a huge threat to Doug Martin. This is Doug Martin's backfield when he's healthy. Rainey will have a role, and I think the role this week could be significant because Martin's, you know, missed so much time, and they probably want to work him in a little slowly. Uh, I would play Doug Martin over Bobby Rainey without question. I think moving forward, you have to look at Martin and think RB2 is comfortable, RB1 is possible still. I, a lot of people have... I'm I not going to trust a guy who's not tall enough to ride a roller coaster. Yeah, that's just like that? me though. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. I I can't trust Bobby Rainey. He's not. You must be this tall to ride. You know the bumper cars, Bobby. You know maybe next time, you know, stand, you know get some higher shoes with some lifts. How about other a couple other running backs this week? Right, Eddie Lacy for the Packers. People are. I honestly during the week on SiriusXM had a couple callers wanting to cut Eddie Lacy yeah. for random guys. Tally Faro. Uh, I think I, I'm not sure if it's Oliver Sankey uh, guys like that. What are your thoughts on Eddie Lacy going against the Bears in Week 4? Yeah, you and I have talked about this before, and I agree with you. The Bears are not good against the run. 161 yards a game last year. This year, I think it's like 145. They're not good in that aspect. And the Packers have been really hit or miss with their offense at this point. They're going to establish things this week. I really believe that. I think this is the week that Eddie Lacy, after having some tough matchups, finally comes through, breaks out, has a nice effort. Now is not the time to, to panic with Eddie Lacy. It's not the time to get rid of Eddie Lacy. Now is the time to be buying Eddie Lacy if someone wants to get rid of him. That's the, why they call him the Oracle, ladies and gentlemen. How about uh, start, some starting quarterbacks this week? We've got uh, Blake Bortles for the Jacksonville Jaguars taking over Teddy Bridgewater for the Vikings this week. Also got Charlie Whitehurst start for the Tennessee Titans. Which one of those three excites you the most from a fantasy aspect there, right? Hopefully it's not Whitehurst. Even though I, I did like your voice, though. That was good. Charlie! Why uh, nobody like a Charlie in the box? I look at Bridgewater, and, you know, there's no Rudolph right now. There's no Adrian Peterson right now. You and I have discussed the backfield situation and the fact that Asiata gets the work. Matt Asiata! And, yeah, he gets the work because he's the guy, but... As I noted in the, the previews this week at Fantasy Alarm, you take away those two blown coverages on him when he had the two big plays, he's averaging 3.1 yards a touch over 34 touches. He's just not, he's just a guy. He's just a guy. Ray, so, I've got my White Sox gnome beside me here, and I'm pointing to him. He is, this guy could run more yards this week than Matt Asiata, even in a possible. good matchup. Matt awesome. Asiata. Here is my impression with my gnome of Matt Asiata. Oh, give me the ball. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just keeps falling down and down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. On his face. Oh, two yards. It's going ultimately nowhere for Matt Asiata. This is a great matchup week for him. That being said, I don't trust him long term whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, there's my gnome right there, Brian Wilson, giant gnome. Yeah, uh, there it is. We're having a gnome I, battle. I think that, yeah, I think to, to answer your question, to come back to it, if I had to choose a quarterback, I'd go Bortles. He looked decent in yes. the second half. I agree. Uh, he, you know, he's just, I think that they, they, they're going to be behind in games, they're going to be passing the football. He's not a terrible play. I totally agree with Blake Bortles. I think because of the Jaguars' defense being so brutal as well, they're going to be kind of passing situations a lot. I think that suits him, his natural ability as well. And I think he's going to get a lot of garbage time numbers this week and going forward as well. That's all the time we have right now. Mans and Flowers previewing week four in fantasy football for Fantasy Alarm TV and the Oracle's Jeff Manns. Till next time, everybody. Later.